Hello everybody, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a trigger mod into the Sindon light gun. Now the purpose of this mod is to reduce the amount of travel that the trigger has when you pull it, which should enable you to shoot faster and get more shots off in a short space of time. Physically it's a very small change, but it can make a big difference to your performance. The mod is completely reversible and doesn't require any cutting or other permanent changes to your light gun. If you change your mind at a later date, you can just simply remove the part and it'll be back to normal again. Now here's the part. The STL model file can be downloaded from Thingiverse and I'll put a link in the description. It was originally designed by Hexed, a member of the Sindon Lightgun Discord community, but this particular version is a remixed version which reinforces that little tab which was particularly fragile and prone to breaking off in the original version. It doesn't take long to print, and if you don't have access to a 3D printer, there are online printing services available that will print it and send it out to you for a fee. Looking at the part, you can see that there are some holes and recessed areas. Notably, that channel between the big hole and the front of the part on the right hand side is where the long leg of the spring will rest. Make sure that there isn't any excess material from the print, such as stringing, clogging up those areas. Pay attention to the underside of that tab. This tab is the stopper that sits behind the trigger and reduces the distance of the travel. Initially, that tab in particular starts printing on thin air, so it might be a little bit messy. If it is, it would be worth trying to carefully shave a bit of the excess material off there to tidy it up. It needs to be flat so that it rests neatly in the gap of the gun's shell. Now to install the part we need to open the gun up and the first step is to remove that orange ring if you haven't done so already. There are nine screws in all, seven on the side of the gun, including one that's hidden underneath the pump at the front of the gun, and then two underneath the pump which holds that in place. To remove the pump just loosen those two screws. You don't need to take those two out completely, just loosen them enough so that they release the pump. Then once that's off, the last screw on the side is revealed. Then it's just a case of simply unscrewing the remaining seven screws. Make sure you use an appropriately sized screwdriver. If you use a bit that's too big, you could risk chewing up the screw head and damaging it. Your screwdriver bit should fit snugly inside the screw head and shouldn't slip. I don't know what these screws are made of, but a couple of times I tried using a magnet to lift them out of the holes once loosened and they only seem at best only mildly attractive to magnets. And this is quite a powerful magnet, but it's not a big problem. Now that all of those screws are out, the shell comes apart quite easily. Consider the half of the screw holes in to be the top and lift it from the bottom half and set it aside. As you can see, this particular gun is a recoil model, so it contains all the extra components to provide recoil. This mod will work equally well for both recoil and non-recoil models. So if you don't have a recoil model, this guide is still appropriate for you. If you do have a recoil unit, here's a warning. Please be very careful around that huge capacitor. Be careful not to touch the metal legs of that capacitor. It can hold charge for quite a long time after use, and you could give yourself a real nasty shock if you accidentally touch them. This particular gun is brand new and has never been used, so it should be safe, but I'm not going to take the risk and I'm still going to be careful around it anyway. Okay, so let's get on with it. I'll just take that pump slider and spring out of the way so I don't lose it, and release the USB cable to get it out of the way. You don't need to unplug it from the main board. Hopefully you can see that the spring here is just underneath the trigger. The short leg is at the back and the long leg is at the front. Lift the trigger off the post and the spring will ping loose. Then just take the spring out. There it is. And this is what it looks like in its correct orientation. So remember what that looks like. Now here's the 3D printed part, and I'll just point out here that the little tab there is the stopper that restricts the travel, and it will rest in a little recess 
in the shell of the gun. If you have a recoil unit, just carefully lift that wire out of the way. Then the part will slot easily over those two posts. Give it a gentle push down so it locates itself snugly in the space. And hopefully you can see here that the little stopper tab is resting neatly at the back of that recess of the shell. Now that's perfectly installed, we just need to get the spring back into place. Now that goes back in that orientation over the post. Then it will need a little encouragement to find the correct position. So I'm just going to use a small tool to gently press it into place. So the loop of the spring goes around the protrusions on the posts. Once located correctly, the long leg of the spring will be settled in that channel at the front of the part, and the back leg is resting against the top of the lower raised area. To get the trigger back into position, I'll use my screwdriver to lift that back leg up a little bit, and then drop the trigger back in over the post, ensuring that the front arm of the spring is behind the switch, and the back end is between the spring's back leg and the part's lower raised area. Once it's in, release the spring and it should now be pressing against the back of the trigger. And if you pull it, it'll click the switch and when you release, it'll spring back into position. So that's the mod installed and we now need to reassemble the shell. I'll first put these wires back into place, being careful to avoid touching the legs of that capacitor. Then I'll feed the USB cable back around the posts where it was before and out of the little hole in the butt. Make sure you put the pump slider and its spring back into place in that little channel on the underside of the barrel. Now that little spring is a bit tricky and likely you won't want to remain inside while you reassemble. So you can just leave it poking out and we can push that back in before we fully close. Putting the top of the shell back on can be a little tricky, especially if you have a recoil unit as you need to line up certain recesses in the top shell with components in the bottom. Pay attention to the positions of the recoil strike plate, the camera module and the clear disc lens as they all must slot into place correctly. The strike plate is particularly awkward as it is often being pushed forward by the solenoid. With a little encouragement, you should be able to get it back on okay. But watch out for that little pump spring. Just use a small screwdriver to push that back inside once you're sure you have everything located correctly then squeeze together. Check the top. If you have a gap here, then you might need to try again, as either the camera module or the strike plate might be misaligned. Now that's all closed up, it's just a case of putting all the screws back into place. Now when you screw these back in, it's good practice to do a small anti-clockwise turn before you start screwing in. This is to help the screw find the thread so you avoid cross-threading into the hole and stripping it out. Also, be careful not to over-tighten them. Just screw in enough so that they grip and hold the shell closed. If you screw in too far, you will almost certainly destroy the internal posts and the screws won't be able to hold the shell together anymore. When you insert these two screws on either side of the trigger, if the trigger doesn't seem to spring back quite as freely as it should, then it could be that one or both of these screws are too tight. So just dial them back a little and test again until the trigger feels right. Once all seven of these screws are in place, we need to replace the pump grip. Line up the screw holes on the slider with the screws in the grip. 
and when you put them together, if you have them in the correct position, you should be able to feel that it's correctly located. It'll feel like it's locked into place and there will be no wiggle. This is what it should look like, with the front of the grip just protruding slightly in front of the barrel. That seems to be in the right position, so I'm just going to screw it in. Again, I'm not going to screw it too tightly, just enough so that those screws are recessed within those holes and that they're holding on. If you do these too tightly, then it might impair the movement of the sliding pump. So if that's the case with you, then just try loosening them a little. Now once all that's in place, the last thing to do is to replace the all-important orange ring, so nobody makes the mistake of thinking that you have a real gun. After all that's done, I'd recommend you go and recalibrate your gun, as it's possible that the camera module is in a slightly different position as it was before. But that's all there is to it. It's quite a simple mod to do and completely reversible if you later decide against it. Now I hope you found this video to be helpful. Consider leaving a comment or hitting that like button if you did. And if you thought it was really good, you could even press it twice. But that's all from me for today. So happy light gunning.